everybody. It's Lisa Murray here again with another Martini Talks. I'm hanging out today with one of my dear friends, Larry White Jr. Larry, thank you for being here today. I'm, I'm so thrilled to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so tell everybody what you've been doing, what's going on, and let's talk some real estate today. Yes, real estate is an interesting, uh, interesting topic right now for sure. I've been in for a while. Like I think I got in in 2006 because everybody was making so much money. I was young and I was like, oh, me too. You're and still young. I, I am still young, yes. Um, and then as soon as I got in, the market just started crashing. Yeah. So I was like, oh no, what do I do? And so I've always changed, adapted, like grew some really cool companies based off the foreclosure market, uh, transitioned into the investor market, like when prices were at their low. And so now, um, you know, I work with a group of agents with the Porchlight Group, we're brokered by EXP, and literally helping agents, one, increase their production, right. decrease their cost, and build something that they have some ownership in. How do you build something to where you're in real estate and it's 60 or 70 years old, you're not forced to sell a home, right? How do you yeah. like position yourself? How do you make the right investments? How do you budget, right? Like this is all part of kind of the coaching and training that they don't teach you in real estate school. No. And this is why so many agents are like, oh my gosh, I made so much money. And then Uncle Sam comes and says, hey, you owe us this. They're like, like uh -oh. but I don't have that. Right. Like I spent all of that. I had bills, Larry, yeah. and this and yeah. that, right? Yeah. Like. So this is where we kind of have to help agents build a foundation. Mm -hmm. You're running a business, right? And so you have to generate leads. You have to qualify leads. You have to, you know, prospect, lead follow-up, appointment setting to get to contracts and do that every single day. Right. Is there an easier way to do that? Can you build systems to do that? I think yes. And yeah. I've been helping some of the top agents across the country do this for, you know, seven or eight years. Yeah. So it's about sh kind of sharing that knowledge and helping people get through that learning curve as fast as possible now. Well, I remember, you know, way back when I was at U of H, there was something that was interesting. I was at Mary Kay, of course. Mary Kay was one of my my very fond trainers. I was in the company whenever she was still alive. And okay. Book it, sell it, recruit it, repeat. Book it, sell it, recruit it, repeat. And yeah. so when I began to become an entrepreneur in my own right with the photography and all the other stuff, the real estate and whatnot, it's there's a system. You have to keep the system mm -hmm. going. You have to do it every day. It doesn't matter if you've got some big house that's getting ready to close. Mm -hmm. You can't put your eye on that ball over there and say, oh, I'm getting ready to get paid, and then take your eye off the main ball, yeah. which is the generation. Which is all the future going. business. Gotta keep it going. Got to keep it going. Yeah. And so many of my friends that are in real estate that are traditional realtors, they're doing exactly what we were talking about before we came and, and started to do this show for you guys today. They get, they get the deal, and then they stop. Mm -hmm. And then when the deal's done, they're like, uh-oh, where's the next deal? Yeah. And so it's getting people trained in the system of making sure that there's like a day thing that they do or hiring somebody to do it for them um, and help give them leads so that they're able to know that they're vetted and that they're ready to roll. Yeah. And, you know, so your company does that too. So my group does that specifically, yes, right? Because agents... The number, as I've grown some companies to almost 3,000 agents across the country, the number one complaint was like, I don't have enough business. Right. Okay, so if I helped you produce more business, that's a win-win, right. right? And so I've kind of taken that same philosophy with these groups that we, that we coach and train, and so I spend a lot of money on lead generation. If you want to be a part of our lead team or group, great, you have to attend the mastermind. You have to work the leads in the system and this is the format that you're going to do that right if you don't want to do that that's fine don't take the business right but if you're going to be on that team this gets the highest conversion ratio right. i'm not guessing like oh i hope this works no, right you know it works yes it's it's following the system those those clues to success there's also there's a really cool company that i'm helping launch right now called live ai it's we're in beta testing, so mm -hmm. I have a group of about 100 agents between Houston and Dallas right now that are piloting this program. Okay. Agents should be following up with their database, their past clients, staying in touch. How many of them do? I don't I, know. I don't know, but you know what's interesting? When I was going through the training at Keller Williams, you know, they were like teaching all these newbies. And uh -huh. I, I walked in as an investor for 30 years 
and had been licensed before, but they were teaching these newbies to write thank you notes. Mm -hmm. And I was like amazed that that was being taught because that's just common sense. Right, that's business 101. Like, hey, and oddly business. enough, with this show, guys, I don't know, you know, y'all been watching me for almost a year. It, it's amazing to me, people that are on the show, Yeah, I'll send them a text and say, thank you for being on the show, and ask for their address. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, I don't want to give you my address because <laughs> I don't want you to put that on the episode information. I'm not giving you that on the episode information. I just want to write you a thank you note. No, I'm, I'm going to do that when you text. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, you're not. I'm going to get it to you. Get it, get it from you before you leave me today. But I think it's going to work out better if I ask that question in person while they're here on this couch. But yes. it was funny because I was like, how many people are not doing that? Right. It's just odd to me. You know, it's just it's common sense. It's you stay in touch with your people. You send them mm -hmm. a newsletter. It doesn't have to even be, for me, it's not about real estate all the time. I'll give them an information about what's going on with our market because right now the market is so tight, which we're going to talk about in a second. But, you know, they need to hear from you, whether it be here's a recipe. Yeah. Here's what's going on with the kids. Hey, by the way, I'm getting ready to shoot blue bonnets. You want to come out? And then while they're out, ask them if they're happy with their house. It's all interconnected. Yes. And for people who are able to do that, I think they're more successful as realtors. And so sure. that brings up a really good point. My third year in real estate, I think I was doing, I think I did 22 deals. I was being coached by Mike Ferry okay. at this point, And I had a call with him and he was like, where'd your business come from? And I was like, I don't know, but I did a lot of it. Like I'm peacocking around the office. And he's like, Pah! right? If you know Mike Ferry, he spits on stage. And, yeah. and he's like, that's bullshit, Larry. He's like... You need to go. And so I went and figured out that over 82% of my business was coming from past clients, center of influence, yet I spent three hours a day calling strangers. The next year, I split that time up an hour and a half, hour and a half. I went from 22 deals to 64 deals in one year. Yeah. Tripled my production. Because you're talking to the people with, that love you. Yes. They trust you. They know yes. you. And they want to support you. And then you brought up a key point. It's not about calling and saying, hey, do you want to buy your cell home today? Right. How are you adding value to people? Right? And so now everybody that's bought or sold, sold a home from our group gets quarterly updates. Hey, I know that you don't want to sell your home right now. You just bought it. But most people love to see their home appreciated sure. or depreciated. Hey, did you realize there's a new tax break for you? Talk to your accountant about this, right? Like, how are you doing things to add value? Yeah. And then this is where the social media channels come in where people can build rapport. Oh, they're at soccer practice with Johnny. My, my kid plays soccer. Now there's a rapport building relationship there that kind of ties everything together and keeps you in front of them. Yeah, I mean, it's really critical. Now the market right now, right now we're taping this, we are in early March, mid-March of 2021, we're all kind of in a, some are wear, wearing masks and some states are not wearing masks. Right. Some people are vaccinated and some mm. people are not vaccinated. And some people are going on vacations and some people are postponing <laughs> vacations. Your, your friendly travel agent over here, NTA, is having to deal with all of that. So the market is going to change. There's a lot of things that have gone on. We've had the stock yeah. market just do some crazy, wonderful stuff over the last year. Real estate is at its tightest point in inventory that I've seen in a long time. Long time. I mean, literally, my partner, I was telling James Edward and you earlier, you know, she was showing houses yesterday and before they could even get home, two were already impending. I mean, like, it's that quick. Yeah. If you've got anything on the market that is just lovely, it's going to be seen and bought like that. Yeah. There are a lot of people though that haven't paid their mortgages. Lots. And a lot of people that are getting ready to go into foreclosure once this moratorium is lifted. So what are your thoughts on the market and what we're going to be seeing as in, from an investment perspective as we're both investors, you know, yeah. how that's changing and what that's going to look like? So right now everybody's making money because the market's going up. Right. Right. This is not where people create wealth. Yes, you can make money right now. This isn't where you make wealth. You create wealth right in the downturns and stuff there. Um, the odd part about this is we're on an inventory shortage. We have pent up demand from these moratoriums. We have not foreclosed on a home in over a year right. across the country. Right. Right. So there has to, like, there has to be some relief. The homeowners, the banks, have to be able to eventually get their property back because they have families to feed and mouths to, to worry about as well. So 
there has to be a humane side where we, yes, we care about the tenants and the homeowners, but if you didn't fulfill your contract, like we have options too at this point in time. Right. So inventory will come on the market. I don't think we will see a crash or a dip because one, it's going to take time for this mm -hmm. inventory to come through and it's going to be gobbled up as fast as it hits the market mm -hmm. because there's so like we're at less than two weeks supply of inventory. An average market is six months supply. So you're going to be able to see kind of the market traject. Now, I used to carry about 2,500 foreclosed listings at one time. Right. I'm reaching out to all of my banks in preparation and helping all of our teams kind of position for that because I do think there will be some opportunities. Mm -hmm. And whatever we put on the market will sell instantaneously. So I want to make sure that we capitalize on that and, and we leverage that. I don't see a crash unless something happens with that the pandemic doesn't go away. Right. Um, the stock market, if something, I mean, we've been on a bull market in that just as we have, if that corrects, if that goes into a different sort of a market, right. how does that affect our housing market? Does that allow, does that force more people into foreclosure? Right. But here's uh, one of the things, it may not be foreclosure is their option. This is where we have to educate our clients 80% of homes have equity in their marketplace right. right now. So they have options. Are they sticking their head in the sand? How do we add value and educate? Look, let's get you some money. Like, let's get you out of this without destroying your credit in the best situation possible. Right. Many people are strategically in a forbearance agreement right now. Some people are doing it because they did lose their job. Everybody's in a certain situation. Yeah. And so this is where I don't think it's a one size fits all. Mm -hmm. As real estate professionals, we need to provide consumer choice. These are the options right. that you have. Which one works best for you? It's not my job to no. say, oh, this is your only option. You right. have to do this. Like, no, what works best for you? Like, do you just need out of this? Do you want to get as much as possible? Do you want to figure out how to save your home? Like, let, let us help you. Let, that's how you create these clients for life. For sure. I mean, and there's a lot of people out there that have, have started businesses and everything was vetted into that business every single yeah. dime. I mean, there's so many businesses, I can't even tell you how many, just on both hands I can count within my client base that had started companies and family businesses and many of them for many years in Houston and they're, they're gone. Yeah. They're gone. And not only are they gone, the business is gone, the restaurant is gone, the boutique is gone. But then what happens when you start thinking about their personal, like, you know, is their house going to be gone too? Yeah. You know, is it not just, it doesn't just, it doesn't just seep in one area. It's a domino effect, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like we were talking about earlier. It's like for those of us that are landlords and you're a landlord and I'm a landlord, Yeah. you know, we've had to hold paper. We've had to sit around and wait for money to come in and people are getting these checks. And last night, Brian and I were watching TV and they're talking about the stimulus checks. And he was like, pay your rent. <laughs> and I was like, they're, they, they aren't forced to do that with that sure. money, right? I mean, they can go out and party or whatever they want to do, go yeah. on vacation, I guess, call me for that. And then I'll get <laughs> your money somehow. I don't know. But there's a lot of people that, that have gotten money that have not applied that towards their, their mortgage or their rent. And well, there's a fine dance. We were talking about this earlier. You know, we don't want to, as human beings, put anybody in the street. Right. But we also have to pay we're not the, most people in any way that I've we don't to. want to end up on the streets right. either, right? We're, we're not in a situation where we're just with a tree in the yard and we the tree, the money comes down and we don't have any responsibility associated mm -hmm. with that investment. I mean, the investment is an investment. Yeah. But the money coming in also helps to pay another person. Yeah. And so it's not just not paying your rent or not paying your mortgage. It's affecting multiple other and there's a lot of people out there that I don't think realize that. Yeah, you have kids, you have expenses to, you know, raise your kids and stuff like that. So if one thing doesn't happen here, where do you get that money to right. kind of do this, right? And that's where we create these contracts of, okay, I'm going to let you live in this home at this price. And if you don't pay, then this, right? And so at some point we have to be able to exercise that yeah. from both parties. Now, and I don't know when you would be more informed than I would, and Brian's not here today, when 
that what's the latest on that for us here in Houston? Uh, for us here in Houston, I believe the moratorium is through June at okay. this point. But most of my properties are in Cleveland, right. so that's uh, the market that I'm following the most, the most. right now yeah. from a personal perspective. Yeah. So, well, in terms of getting involved with the other real realtors that are in the Houston area community in Houston, what are the ideal people that you're looking for to, to help? Yeah. To have as clients. It's for those of you, many of you who are also in real estate that watch me and and have followed me through the years with Bron doing real estate um, and know that I'm involved in that market. Um, what what person that's watching today? What is what is the ideal partnership that you or association or or contract maybe with a realtor <laughs> right. that you're looking for? What, so so more so, it's uh, I I think it's we're pretty clear, right? Like. This is who I am. I don't need to work with everybody. Right. Right. There's there's some real tour, real estate professionals I don't care for. Like I am not a, in a position where I need to work with anybody. Right. I want to work with people that want to grow. Okay. I know what I've built in the past. I know, like not just me. I have 19 other coaches in my group. Right. Like if somebody came to me and said, "Hey, Larry, can you help me?" Like on Instagram, I'm okay on Instagram. Yeah, I'm not a, I don't have a million followers or anything like that, but I have a coach that generated 200 leads on Instagram last month without spending a dollar. So I don't need to be the jack of all trades and a master of none. Right. What do you need? Let me help solve that problem. Right. So I have commercial experts. I have luxury experts, all that because this rising tide raises all ships. Right. So I want people that want to grow, that want to help create our own culture and community mm -hmm. of based around production, where we're producing more, we have some ownership in what we're building, right. and now we're growing something that's creating wealth, right? Because I think the wealth opportunity, right? Um, I mean, we were talking with your son about the traditional education system and right. how we how it almost teaches people to be employees. Like I want those entrepreneurs mm -hmm. that want to duplicate how I've built teams. Like I will give you the roadmap, right? I can teach you how to produce leads for free. I can he teach you how to outsource and have somebody else produce them. We have to create a plan that's unique for them. Mm -hmm. And so again, I want people that want to travel and do mastermind groups with some of the top agents in the country, the top teams in the country. That's why I'm buying my ranch in Fredericksburg so I can host events and stuff like that. That it's are going to be a lot of fun too, guys. It is. Yes. Like I want this boutique type feel where again, we're all growing something that we have some ownership in. And as I help you grow, I grow as well. And, and it, it kind of brings it all up. But more importantly, I want people that want to create a future in real estate. How do we create a system that's producing business, adding value to your clients every single day, whether we're out at the ranch right. or and whether, yeah, whether we're traveling, right? Key. That's, that's huge. And it's missing. We don't teach people. We don't teach realtors that in our classes for them to get their license. And most brokers don't do it themselves. Right. Most brokers are producing business because they have to. Right. Like I want to help people create a better business model. And I know it's out there. Oh, it is. And, and the passive, the passiveness of the real estate invest, investment side of things is really where we've always had the vision. Like, yeah. you know, we came in, I came into the Murray family as a 20 year old, Brian and I rode the first grade school bus together. You know that, y'all know that. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, I grew up with knowing that his daddy was in real estate, but real estate has always been, it's just, it's an engine that just works behind the scenes, mm -hmm. you know, not as a realtor, sure. but as an investor, it's an engine that works behind the scenes. And if you do a good job, same thing with your inventory, if you take care of your repairs and you don't let things go into slum and you take good care of your tenants and you have a really good portfolio of properties, you can retire young. Mm -hmm. And you can be able to do other things to give back to the community and, and show value and help people grow their businesses too, which is what I get the wonderful privilege of doing now, which is so awesome with, yeah. with all the stuff that I've done with the YouTube channel over this past year. And really, I found that through the Martini Talks, uh -huh. especially the Martini Talks, 
you know, initially I was trying to get in touch with people to help promote their businesses, similar to when I was writing about them in my column. Yeah. And with the magazines not being like all the time, all around, you know, everywhere, there's not a lot of opportunity to do that for them. And the newsletter, of course, is there. Yeah. And I would love to have all of your information for the newsletter to all of my tribe. Sure. And for sure, when you get the beautiful ranch built yeah. out and everything, I can help fill that field with yeah. people who are like-minded like we are about synergy, high synergy and really wanting to do amazing things with our clients. And to, So just to hit on to answer your question, because I kind of danced around it, I want people that are coachable and trainable that want to build more. Right. That they're running into a roadblock where they can't spend thousands of dollars on coaching right. each month to go to a private organization. I want to partner with you, right? Like I want to build something with you. And one of my, and if you guys follow me or you guys connect with me on social media, like you'll see, I do a lot of testimonials for the agents that we have success stories with across the country. I have a 20 year old agent here in Houston. One of my favorite stories. And I have a lot of really cool success stories, like one deal last year, like 11 deals closed in our first quarter together, right? Wow. Like we, those are life changing yeah. things. But this agent came to me 20 years old and I make fun of him because he couldn't even be on Martini Talk because he can't even have a martini, right? Right, right. <laughs> um, and he was bagging groceries six months ago. He's like, Larry, I want to do real estate. Like, can you help me put together this plan um, to get into real estate full time? In December, he put in his resignation because he had $40,000 in pending gross commission income on the table, which was when he came to me, he had zero he reserve. Was. Now he has six months reserves. He has money in the bank and he has over $20,000 in equity, like in the company. And I was like, Camden, imagine what your life looks like at the age of 25. Yeah. At the age, like that's freedom. Right? You want to meditate? You want to do yoga like for two hours? Go do it. it. Right? Like you run business, like run a business though. Don't be a slave. Don't be the highest paid employee oh, no. in your business. No. And that's what's so cool is that whenever you give people the ability to have financial freedom and then they get to a point where they're able to give back. I mean, that's what's been the most joyful thing about this experience is that people are coming to me, they're watching the show and like, Hey, I started a business during COVID and you've known me for 20 years or 15 years or 10 years or five, whatever it is. Can I come be here and, and talk about that? Can you help me? Can you, can you help me? Mm -hmm. Can you help me? Like he came to you and said, can you help me? And yeah. I was like, absolutely. I can help you whatever yeah. you need me to do. And that brings me to one last point I want to make because I've not mentioned this on any show yet, but it's going to happen because it's happening right now. I asked you earlier if you were on Clubhouse, and, mm -hmm. I, and I'm on Clubhouse, and you're on Clubhouse. Isn't that, and if you don't know mm -hmm. what Clubhouse is, I'll send you an invitation, to hit me up, whatever. But listen, it, it's just the same synergy we're talking about yeah. right here. It's just an extension of a bunch of people, mainly entrepreneurs and thought leaders, yeah. giving freely, helping each other. Literally, you can go in there and start talking to Grant Cardone. Like you can be in the same room with Gary V. I know right? Gary and V and are like that. Yeah. Yeah. He was on he was on the um, Teachable Summit last September. Uh huh. He took four questions and he took my question. No. And I just love Gary V. I just yeah. love him so much. And he was like, just do whatever you want, Alisa. <laughs> Start writing a course on cooking and they'll come see you. Start writing a, a course on like gardening. Him or the, give them as much value where it's a disservice that they don't work with you. Yeah, he's just like they they love they'll love you just give everything that god's given you just give it yeah. and then it just comes back and I, it's just I, so I wonderful. tell agents all the time if there's a better option to provide more opportunities for coaching training lead generation etc help you keep more money help you invest and build wealth let me know yeah like i'm not convinced like this is the almighty model it's the best one that i've seen right and i want to share it with everybody but if there's a better model, let me know. Like, let's run some numbers. Let's let's make a calculated decision and figure out how to do this together. Yeah. Right. But a closed mind is very expensive. Oh yeah. Very expensive. Yeah, sure so. is. So, well, I want to thank you so much for being here today. Oh, yes. I just love the fact that you came to see me, and I hope you guys have found some value in this. If you have, please do us a favor and like and share, and don't forget to ring the bell. And we'll see you next week on another Martini Talk. Take care.